I'm a programmer uh, from here, from Argentina. I work at Ten Pines and I teach at the uh, National University of Quilmes. And today I'm going to talk uh, to you about adding TCR to Smalltalk. So uh, just a small comment. Um, in each uh, slide, you'll, you'll see a text both in English and in Spanish. Um, so you can just, if you don't know Spanish, you can just ignore it. It's the same thing. Um, OK, awesome. So um, to start, we need to know at least what TCR is and what Smalltalk is, right? I won't get into this it's about the Smalltalk part. I guess you, you've got the right intuition. Um, but we need to know what TCR is. So TCR is a programming workflow similar to TDD. Um, the letters come from test and commit or revert. Um, so this is like a, a command that you can evaluate that um, simulates the workflow um, but if you don't want to get into the um, like control flow semantics and uh, associativity and so on, uh, I have written a version uh, with like small talky syntax here. Uh, so the idea is that you, um, whenever you make a change, you run the test for your program and then you commit the change. But if some test fails, then you revert the change, right? That should happen automatically for you. Uh, and the only way for you to um, make a commit is by going through this process. So um, there you can see that it's possible for you to have your code reverted. So you may lose code, right, while programming. So you may be wondering why, right? Like this is obviously a bad idea, right? Because you may lose code and who wants to lose code while they are programming and so on. Um, so uh, to better understand why I think uh, it's worth trying this, um, I'll share the story of like how this um, began. So the idea of TCR emerged from an interaction between Ken Beck and Otmar Strome. Um, they, uh, Ken Beck was talking about um, TDD and how after you make a test pass, you should make a commit. And so Altman said, okay, but by symmetry, you should uh, revert the change if, you, if the test fails. Um, and so uh, Ken said, I hated the idea, so I had to try it, right? So I think um, it, this is like very cheap to try and it's very safe to try, so why not, right? Um, that happened in 2018, but then this year on, um, Another conference called Camp Smalltalk Supreme, Ken Beck posed a challenge for the Smalltalk to community to implement TCR in Smalltalk, like a tool that lets you program this way in Smalltalk. Um, so uh, here we are. Um, so uh, how do we start? Well, it may be useful to consider how this is um, usually implemented in um, other languages. Uh, a very, the most trivial implementation um, is for file-based languages, which are like most of, of programming languages. Uh, for example, here I have an example in Python. So you have your code and it's stored in a text file. And um, a way to implement TCR is to run another program which watches for changes to the, the file in which you have your program. And whenever that file, uh, that file changes, it run the, runs the test and then uses get to either commit or uh, reset the state of, of the file. Um, one drawback is that you, if you want to use this uh, particular implementation, you have to have both your test code and your implementation code in the same file, right? Uh, which is a, a problem. But if we wanted to do the same thing in Smalltalk, we'll run into a problem because Smalltalk is not uh, file-based. And uh, I think this has some drawbacks in the, in the sense that we cannot use uh, some tools, not, not as easily, some tools have been adapted to work with text, with text files like Git. But on the other hand, it forces us to consider another way of solving the problem uh, that isn't uh, as coupled with the uh, implementation details of the storage mechanism that you use to uh, save your code. So I think that's very interesting and um, another reason why I um, started investigating about this. 
Um, so when I was thinking about this talk, I wanted to show you an example of what it feels like d doing TCR. And at the same time, I wanted to show you uh, how to implement like the basic uh, flow. And I already knew that uh, I've only had time to show you one thing, but um, that's what happened with dichotomies. They are either true or false. So uh, I decided to show you one thing, which is um, using TCR to implement TCR. So I'll be showing you both things at, at once, right? Um, so yeah, we can start. So I'm going to uh, go to um, a quiz image here. So our goal would be to implement the most basic flow of TCR, which is um, I want to, whenever I change a method, I want to run the tests. And if the tests pass, then I want to save the changes. But if the tests fail, I want to revert the changes. So we are going to implement that. So um, the thing that we use to save methods here uh, is called a uh, small talk editor. So I'll go, go and browse the small talk editor class. And uh, on the class side, um, you have um, all of the menu uh, options defined there. So I've added, I already added one option that is save with TCR. Uh, whenever it gets executed, it will send a save with TCR message to the small talk editor that you, you are using at that, at that point. And I also bound it with the uh, control S or command S um, so that I, Every time I hit it, it will run this state with TCR, which should have that logic that we are going to implement. We still have the, um, the accept option to accept the contents, um, but it's not bound to the shortcut. But it's still there. We could uh, use it, but the idea is that we always use this saved with, with TCR. Right. So um, the save with TCR method is not implemented yet. I just added the option into the editor. So we'll go here, and we can start by uh, writing a test. So um, to run the, co the code that I was showing you, we just need to save something, right? So I'm going to write test 01. And e I can either select the Save with TCR option, menu option, or I can hit con uh, Control S. And uh, a debugger pops open because uh, pops up because um, the um, small talk editor doesn't understand the save with TCR message because we didn't implement anything yet. So I'll create a method, the small talk editor class. And um, here we have the first problem because now I want to change the save with TCR method. But in order for me to change it, I need to hit like Control S, and that will invoke the same method, right? Um, so we need to bootstrap the system because we are in like in a secret situation here. So to do that, um, well, the implementation, the, the first implementation I want is to just save whenever whatever thing I'm trying to save. So uh, I want to accept the contents here, and but I can't. I can't uh, hit Control S. I should use the normal accept just this time, right? And once I do that, then uh, I'm bootstrapped. So I can hit Control S, and um, I'm going through the same method to save itself, and that works. Okay, awesome. So uh, this should be the last time we use the, uh, ac the like the common accept. We should always go through save with TCR. Okay, and um, we also realized that. The only way to complete this implementation is by using TCR because if we write code that fails, we won't be able to save it. So the only option is, is to, for us to revert it so that we are able to save more code. Um, so we are already running TCR, although we have to revert manually, but we are forced to revert we, because we, don't, we won't be able to save the code if uh, it's wrong. Um, so yeah, we can start uh, implementing this. Um, so the first thing I'll need is the current implementation of the method. Like before accepting the changes, I want the uh, old method to be able to restore it later. So I'll say uh, current method. 
and uh, I'll get the current uh, compiled method uh, from self. Self remembers this multi editor that I, I'm using. And um, well, if I keep writing code, um, for sure something is going to fail and then I won't be able to save it. So I better save now. And um, it also has the uh, side effect that it's, it will test the code that uh, I've already written. So I'll save, I need to declare the local variable. And then I save again so that the updated code executes and it works. Okay. Um, we aren't doing anything yet, but we are going, right? Um, going there. So um, we need to update the method so that we run the test with the updated method. But we need a, a, like a, a handle to the updated compile method so that we can look for the test for it and, and so on. So uh, instead of accepting the content, I can um, send a message accept and uh, with method do that receives a block um, that will be executed with the new method and we uh, don't want to do any, anything yet. I'll save and if I save, uh, we realize that we made a mistake because um, the block accepted um, didn't accept any argument that it's supposed to accept the method, right? So we made a mistake, that means that we cannot save anything now unless we revert it. So I'm going to do that by hand. Um, so I'm going to go to versions and to revert. And then um, I'm going to restart it. Okay, and now I'm able to save again. So we'll do it again. Uh, accept and with method do and now I can um, put the new method here I'm receiving the new method I'm not doing anything yet I better save right okay this works um, and then I want to look for the test suite corresponding to that method right so I can ask the test suite class um, for the, um, I don't remember the name of the message, for compile method. There it is, for compile method. And that gives me back the a test suite, maybe. <laughs> um, so I, I'm going to save. I have to declare the local variable here, okay? And uh, this is something that I like about objects. I can just like ask for, in, for something I need and uh, I don't care about how to look for the test suite uh, for that uh, method. I just ask for it and I have it. Um, and uh, okay, so if we have some test suite, so if a test suite if it's not nil, um, I want to run it. So I will save this, okay? So if it's not nil, I want to run the test suite I'm saving all the time so that this code runs. And, um, and if the test uh, didn't pass, so has passed, uh, it falls, uh, I want to revert the implementation to uh, where it was before. So uh, I'm going to get the, um, the method class for a new method and I want to reinstall the old method there. So I'll send the add method, method method message to that. Um, I need to have the current method, which was like the original one. And I need to notify uh, the editor so that it upsta updates itself. Um, yeah, and then um, I'll just flash the the editor in that case so that we can have at least a visual indication that something went wrong. Uh, okay, awesome. So I'll hit proceed, save the test. So um, now let's see, if I write some code that executes and it works, so self-assert true, for example, I hit Control S and it saves. But if I say self-assert false and I hit Control S, it reverts, automatically reverts to um, the original code we had. Um, so yeah, so we've implemented the most basic flow. 
um, using TCR so in a circular way, so very complete. Awesome. Um, of course, there are a lot of things that we didn't solve. Um, I have a more complete implementation in this other image where um, I'm doing exactly the same thing. For example, here I have like some tests that test that the result of sending the M1 message should equal 42. And so if I go here and change this code to be like 40 plus two, it gets saved. But if I say just return 40 and try to save it, uh, it gives me some feedback about what test failed and it reverts the code. Um, so okay, that's the basic flow. Now, um, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions here because that's fine if we are changing just one method. But what, what happens if we want to change more than one method at the same time? Um, one example of that is if I write a new test, um, I need, uh, I, like, I write a new test that sends a message that I haven't implemented yet. I won't be able to save the test uh, because I need the, the, the implementation on the class side, for example, right? Uh, so I need both. So um, the way in which this is solved for uh, file-based languages is by um, having as like the unit of work to create your change is the file. Um, so you have there the test and the implementation. So you can change both and then you hit save and everything gets saved. Um, but here, the in this case, the method is very small, a very small unit of, of change, uh, like the unit of work to, to uh, build the change that you want to build. Um, so I started thinking about how to solve this problem because um, the thing that I, the essential thing that we want to have is to be able to edit all of the places that depend upon each other so that the system works. So this is like a coupling issue. So, um, what should be like the, the unit of, of, of change? Sorry, I have one um, more slide here that I forgot about. But um, basically it says, okay, if I want to make a big change with this um, TCR uh, workflow, it'd probably be wrong on the first try. So uh, failing and failing in place, I'll lose the code. So I better decompose the big change into smaller valid changes, what, which was what we uh, did. So yeah, going back to how we change more than one thing. Um, so um, I started thinking about it, and I think that the thing that for me um, like spans the whole things that you want to change um, is uh, execution flow, right? Like you, if the execution goes through some place, maybe you want to change that place so that it works. Um, that's not always true because you may have some coupling situations where you uh, that don't belong to the same execution path in, in the same like um, uh, VM for example so um, one example is when parts of your program travel like, like part of your program can travel through um, through space or through time through space if you are sending them over the wire to another server for example um, and through, uh, through time, if you are saving it into a database or some persistent storage to be retrieved later in time. So uh, in those cases, maybe the, the change that you need to make uh, is on another machine, for example, or lives in another program. Um, but uh, we are not going to worry about those cases yet. Uh, we are going to solve a simple case. And for that, we can say that the unit of work that we need is a debugging session, right? So. Um, you should have one opportunity to make it work during one debugging session. And um, that's what I have implemented in this other um, system. So the only um, way that the debugger will pop open and let you uh, fix it and, and make one big change is if just one test uh, is failing, right? So this is like a decision I made, arbitrary decision I made. Um, so, because maybe you are implementing a, a new feature or if you are changing one test because uh, some uh, business logic has, have changed, uh, maybe that test will fail. So you need to implement the whole logic there. So um, if I change this so that it sends the M2 message uh, and I expect it to return 40, then I'll save it and uh, I get the debugger. So uh, I'll go here and, well, the, the object doesn't understand the M2 message, so we create it. 
I will create a method and we were expecting uh, 40, so I'll hit proceed and it worked. Um, but if I made a change, like an invalid change, let's say that I now expect 41, I'll save the test, the debugger pops open and then um, I go into M2 and return like another number and save and then I hit proceed the test will have failed and so everything like the, all of the changes I made through that debugger session gets reverted so both the change on the test and the change on the um, implementation side um, okay but if I make a change for example here and more than one test fails then it just gets reverted and uh, also if I, uh, yeah, if I don't solve it in one shot using the debugger so I can go back, restart, uh, restart and so on, uh, everything will get reverted. Everything I did during the debugger session. Um, another thing to consider is that the test that should run after I hit proceed on the debugger should be not only the test that ran uh, previously, but also all of the tests for the methods that I changed during the debugger session, right? If everything passes, then uh, everything gets saved. Uh, this is like one way of implementing it that I decided, um, but uh, we can debate if this is the better, like the best way or not. Um, okay, but in a way I was forced to do this because I had to implement it in Smalltalk, right? If uh, I just decided to use files, um, I wouldn't have thought about doing something like this, right? Um, awesome. So um, here I have like a little scheme with a, uh, with the things that we uh, saw. So if I'm making a refactor, I'll go and change the implementation code. And so the test should still pass. Um, but if I am making a behavior change, then um, I should do it by creating or changing a test or by modifying just one behavior. And then when I hit save, just one test should fail. And then the bar pops open and I can do the change. And if, it, uh, if all the tests pass after that, they should be saved. Um, awesome. So um, there are a lot of things to think about, a lot of new incentives here um, that are not solved by what I showed you. For example, uh, we need to have feedback about what's committed or not. Let's say that I'm inside of a debugger session and I made changes to three or four methods. I need to like have a visual indication about what are the methods that are changed temporarily that could be reverted. Um, what happens if I have more than one debugger open at the same time, right? Um, so maybe we can scope it by um, subsystem or by package or something like that. Um, and we also have to have a very good way to select the tests that are going to be run. And we also want to have fast, te fast tests because uh, if the tests that, like, aren't fast enough, we can't afford to be executing them all the time. So things to, to, think, to think about, you know, have the answers for all of those. Uh, but going through this exercise uh, makes you uh, pose those problems, right? Okay, awesome. And uh, so uh, we have talked about like the uh, micro stuff here, like how to implement the flow uh, uh, and so on. Um, but uh, Kent, which is the one Ken Beck, which is the one who is popularizing this um, workflow, has a certain vision about it. Because now, if you work in this way, you are only making safe and small changes, right? So the changes that you make should be small because you are risking a lot if you make a big change because all of your code could be reverted. And they have to be safe because the only way for them to be uh, committed, to be saved, is if uh, all of the tests are passing. And so this allows you to have uh, a stream of uh, very small and safe changes that uh, each programmer on the team starts to generate. And so we can start to think about synchronizing those changes um, to like uh, between all of, the, all of the computers of the programmers, for example, so that you can have as if you had um, a global shared image, right? And you can also play the same concept on deploying, right? If you receive a, a stream of a very small and safe changes, then you can say, okay, just deploy the changes wherever you receive them, apart from um, like sending them to the computers of all of the developers. 
and uh, maybe we can use something like Croquet to do, to do that, um, that uh, Vanessa briefly presented um, yesterday. I don't know, but uh, I think this is a very interesting idea. Um, so yeah, so these are some references um, um, from which I took some uh, information. And um, I'll upload my uh, implementation for quiz small talking to GitHub. And uh, yeah, that's everything from me. So thank you. How do I make people use this? <laughs> well, I. I had the same question, and the like. One of my answers was, "Well, I should give a talk about it. <laughs> That's a start, right? But yeah, and having an implementation also helps." <laughs>